Hey guys, and welcome to The Hot Johnson. So hot right now. So this is part two. Uh, If you missed last week's episode about cultivating more pleasure in your sex life, that is up right now. You can go check that out. And then today we're going to get to your personal struggles because we put up on our social media an anonymous questionnaire and asked you guys what you personally struggle with when it comes Mm -hmm. to sex. So are you ready, Charlotte? We're going to go through, we're going to go through these. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Okay. So the first person said, I struggle with my body, Mm. uncomfortable with the lights on, legs Mm -hmm. open, exposed. Porn vaginas are pink and tight. I've had two kids and I don't get waxed. This is where like the topic of porn can be challenging because it really does depict like big rock hard cocks and only one type of vagina. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but like growing up, I only knew of like my kind of vagina. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I remember I was like, you know, probably literally in my 20s. And I was with one of my girlfriends who was like, she's like, you know, the naked, the people who grew up in the naked households. She was always like walking around naked. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, they're, they're, they're different. And I started following. Um, this is a great account, by the way, to follow on Instagram. Mm. I think it's called like my vulva vulva gallery. OK, I'll, I'll link it so you guys can can go follow it. Follow yeah, it if you I want. Check that. But like as we've gotten older, I don't know about you, I've come to to understand and now know that there are lots of different kind of vaginas. Mm-hmm. And this Instagram account, it just art. it shows like artistic drawings of all the different kinds of vaginas to mm. help normalize that not all vaginas look like porn vaginas. Mm. Yeah. Wouldn't it be so cool if you had like a giant wall of vagina of art in your house? Yeah. Yes. I mean, that'd be a way to like normalize the beauty of your own vagina. A million like, percent. Oh, wow. Look at these beautiful posts. Pussies all over my wall. Totally. Pussy right? art. Yeah, yes. like I'm there for it. Yeah. I definitely. mean, it's a real struggle to what's out there in our culture right now. Yeah. It, I think it's a real normal feeling for a lot of people. Totally. Yeah. A million percent. I can't remember what documentary. I think it was like The Social Dilemma where they were talking about how vaginal, what is it, vaginal plasties? Mm-hmm. I don't know the name for it, if that's correct, but vaginal plastic surgery yeah. and reconstruction has become so common. Um, And I think it is because a lot of us are seeing these images on porn and then you're comparing yourself, Mm -hmm. feeling like yours doesn't look the same way. And, you know, it's interesting. Just side note, I work I know a few women who work in, you know, helping women with as I've delved down this path of my pelvic pain stuff, talking with women who work with women with pelvic pain and them talking about how vaginal surgeries sometimes like something like that can potentially create pain or um, lack right. of pleasure because yeah. if you're cutting anytime you're cutting into the body into the you're nerves. cutting nerves and like yeah. I've very much so had that with my breasts when mm-hmm. I had my breast implants removed yeah. um, I don't have a lot of sensation in my breasts anymore at all and like that is a huge pleasure zone in your body so I, I don't know about you but I don't want to remove my pussy pleasure no no we don't want to risk our pleasure no for, for an aesthetic yeah fuck that noise yeah let's just like change the narrative like yeah. let's get that pussy art up on the walls yeah. i think then it's like embracing your own body like we were talking about on the last episode put up that pussy art girl start yeah. start seeing your pussy as a beautiful pussy that's gonna <laughs> help okay next question uh penetration as a woman doesn't get me off I need more stimulation and foreplay to get off. And it's so annoying when men don't do oral or partake in foreplay. That is fucking annoying. (laughs) Right? (laughs) I remember when I was younger and I had a partner who like he got off and I didn't. And he just thought that that was normal. Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes if you have a partner like that, it's like maybe there needs to be a little education component of like, hey, I don't know if you've had partners in the past who didn't orgasm, Mm -hmm. but I do. I like to orgasm every time I have sex and Mm -hmm. I can, you know. I can orgasm, so let's make it happen. Can we can we make this happen? Yeah, I think, like you said, it, it comes down to communication and yeah. how comfortable are you with communicating, yes. with talking about sex, yes. with talking to your partner about what it is that you need yeah. and what it is that you want in the bedroom. Yeah. I also just want to normalize the first part of that. Penetration as a woman doesn't get me off. Yeah. That is super common. The large part of women don't get off from penetration alone. We need some clitoral stimulation. Yeah. So whether that's, you know, double clicking that mouse yourself or he does it or you bring in a toy. Mm-hmm. Most of us need clitoral stimulation. And gen- gentlemen, gentlemen, like if you're going to stimulate your woman, yeah. like give her that 
clitoral stimulation, like yeah. give her all the foreplay to the point where she's like fucking put it in me. Yes. Right? Like she's so hungry for <gasps> you. Like make her hungry for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And like there's a way to do that. Oh my God. So <laughs> the, uh, what I, you know, maybe this person with the question, yeah. maybe penetration could be pleasurable. Maybe that there is right. a possibility for that, but you're just hungry. Right. And they are, and like, you need to get fed right. That's, you need to get fed right. And you know what? I was thinking about that. Like if they don't really know how to do the foreplay and yeah. they don't, the foreplay yeah. and you know, why don't you just start masturbating in front of them? A million percent. And, right. And I think that's an, a, a really important thing. I've heard, you know, some men talk about that, like this expectation that women have that I'm just supposed to get them off. Yeah. And I think there is a bit of a personal responsibility piece of knowing how to get yourself off. Right. Like put his hand where you want it yeah. and like show him. Also, I just kind of like doing right? it myself because I'm like, I know how to get myself off. If we can just like have this as like a co-creation of like, Mm -hmm. I'm doing some things, you're doing some things. Then there's, I don't have an expectation that it is just his job to get me off. Mm -hmm. I know how to get myself off. And now we're just co-creating. Yeah. I like that. I love it. I love it. Ooh, juicy. (laughs) We're getting turned on. Okay. Next question. Telling the person I'm with about the things I want to do to me without being judged or slut shamed. Oh, slap. Yeah. Who've been slut shaming you, honey? Well, my question with this one is have you been slut shamed mm-hmm. or is this a fear? Because I right. think a lot of us have, you know, these fantasies yeah. that we are afraid of communicating and sharing because we, society has told us we're not. You know, like you said in your last episode, I'm supposed to be the good girl. Right. So am I allowed to want to be a dirty little slut? (laughs) So I think for me, there's like something really fun about saying to your partner, like, hey, I'd love to talk about our fantasies. Yeah. Can we talk about our fantasies? Because I almost guarantee he's going to have some as well that maybe he feels like you're going to judge him. Mm -hmm. I feel like so often we do have our fantasies and we're afraid of sharing them. Um, In my experience, the more you can be open with a man about that, they're like, oh my God, like really? You have some too? Like they love it. Yeah. And that level of that vulnerability builds like a deeper connection. Yeah. So when you're able to go there and just share a little bit, I mean, maybe you've got 10 fantasies. Just pick one. Pick the one that feels the least scary to start with. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, next one. Uh, Dirty talk. Talk dirty to me. (laughs) I like hearing it, but feel uncomfortable when I say it. Probably Mm. be because I grew up in a religious home i've struggled with that yeah i was wondering because yeah. i know you grew up religious yeah. yeah i feel like it can just feel so awkward and okay. uncomfortable at first it's like am i supposed to say that yeah what? so how have you found a way to help shift that at all well i think it's just like you have to do it yeah i know it's it's one of those things like the only way out is through mm-hmm so once you practice something, it just feel, starts feeling more familiar mm-hmm. and more comfortable. And it's going to feel like really awkward and yucky and weird at yeah. first. But maybe just start on text. Ooh, that's and a then, good like, idea. And then like leave a slutty voicemail. Oh, I love that. You know? And my thought with this question, both the dirty talk and the last one about sharing fantasies, are you worried about the other person judging you or not liking the dirty talk? Or is it more internal self-judgments yeah know? yeah that's a good question and I'm, that might be different for each person mm-hmm. you know and it could just feel really unfamiliar like yeah. uncharted territory totally yeah. I love a little dirty talk <laughs> <laughs> okay what about how to have a g-spot orgasm a couple people actually like two different people we're curious about that. Mm-hmm. Are you for, are you well equipped with the no, G spot yeah, orgasm? The G spot. How yeah. about the cervical orgasm? Oh yeah, that's like even deeper. I feel like no one talks about that. Did you did you learn about that in tantra? Yeah. Okay. It's like a thing. You can even like hear your cervix. It kind of makes like you can hear your cervix. Yeah. What and sound like, does it make? A click. Yeah. What? <laughs> I want. Can we reprogram it? I want to be like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mama Your pussy to make like noises. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Oh, you could, it, so it, it makes you meow, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Okay, so cervical orgasm, from my understanding, that is just like if the 
penis is able to get in deep yeah, enough it's like to a be deep penetration. Yeah, so probably you on top position. So the you on top is definitely the easiest way yeah. to access like the cervical orgasm. Yeah, because it's like. Yeah. Gravity. Right. But there are, you know, everyone's cervix is placed differently, tilted differently and different. Everyone, the gentlemen have different t- types of members. Yeah. So it's all about how your bodies are working together and like finding the position that works. Yeah. 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 And you and I have also talked about the potency of a cervical orgasm. If you have one, it's such an intense orgasm. And like when you have that with a partner that for me, that is often where I I cry. Like, yeah. I'll cry when I have a cer- cervical orgasm. Yeah. And I feel like I... Such all, a release. In all the different trainings and things, I can't remember where I hear stuff, but I feel like at some point I heard how the cervical orgasm is maybe connected to our... Um, the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve. And so when you're having that orgasm, how it can be a huge nervous system release. Yeah. And I've, I've cried in front Definitely of, like, numerous like, partners. Who, who wrote that song, like, Sexual Healing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sexual yeah. healing. That's, like, a real thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a real thing. And it's so funny when dudes are like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm great. <laughs> yeah. I'm fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. So screw the G-spot. Have a cervical orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Let me next skip to one. the good part. I struggle with being in my head and being in the moment and enjoying it fully. Mm. So many of us, because we are in the hustle bustle, we're on this go, go, go. You got kids, you got all these things to do. You are in your head a lot of the time. And to be connected to your sexual desire, you need to be in your body. I mean, don't fight it. Don't fight being in your head. Yeah. Just like what's in there? You know, like what what are you cultivating in your mind? My question would be, what are what are your thoughts? Exactly. Are you thinking about your body? Like, Mm -hmm. are you concerned about how your body looks? Is it are you concerned about if he likes things? What are your thoughts? So that would be my question is like, what are you thinking about Mm -hmm. and how can you address those things maybe out of the bedroom? Exactly. Okay. I struggle with orgasms from my partner. I usually just take over and give myself pleasure. Is this maybe because your partner doesn't know what you like? Like, to me, this sounds like somebody who knows the way that they like to orgasm and what gets them off. And maybe does your partner not know? Maybe you need to do some mutual masturbation and, like, show them. Right. Show them what you like. Yeah. Or are you afraid to surrender? Mm. You know, is there a fear piece in there? Because when I hear the word, I take over... I'm going like, well, are there other places in your relationship where you feel like you need to take over? What would it feel like if I just had a ch- like a little chat with him at some point about things that I like and things that I need and I let him step up to the plate? What would it feel like? Mm-hmm. If I, could. I think there is. Yeah, that's a such a such yeah. a good point. I relate to this person. And I think for me, it is because I really do know what I like. And sometimes when you're with a newer partner, every vagina, every woman likes different things. You maybe just need to communicate and 100%. show them what it is that you like. OK, next one. I'm a male. How do you explain to your female partner that you love them? But the sex isn't that fun, interesting, or exciting. Love them, but mm. yeah. And yes, I've tried mentioning, suggesting, etc. but their listening skills in bed are poor at best. Mm. So what pops out for me right away with this is this person says their listening skills in bed are poor at best. To me, it sounds like you've probably in bed been like, hey, like, why don't we try this? Can you do this? But maybe the best place to have this conversation is outside of the bedroom at another point. I agree. Because sometimes when you're in the moment, I mean, she could just be like in her pleasure, like not <laughs> hearing words. Like maybe she's just like, like in la la Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I would say try having that convo outside of the bedroom. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like change the location, change, change the tonality of the conversation. Make it like... What do I need? What do you need? Like make it like a two way street. Like maybe there's something more that she's wanting too. Yeah. I think this is also a really common thing when people are in relationships for a long time where things do start to feel maybe not as exciting. Mm -hmm. And to me, this is why it's so important for you as two individuals need to have some excitement outside of the bedroom 
in your own individual lives. Yeah, go on vacation and have sex on the beach. Well, that's <laughs> honestly, yes, but that's not even what I mean. Yeah, I yeah. mean, as two individuals, as a person, like when I go into a relationship, I'm like, I need to ha- cultivate and have excitement and passion in my own life mm-hmm. so that I can continue to show you. up in my relationship yes, and be yes. like, hey, babe, just got a promotion. Guess what's happening here? So that yes, like, I love that. Yes. Thank you for mentioning that. That's yes. so important. So often when we're in relationships, yes. we get comfortable. And so things we just project. Stop. Well, things just stop growing and evolving. And as people, we need new stimulation for excitement. So mm-hmm. I think when you're with someone for a long period of time, you need to be able to do that individually. Like he needs to do that. And you also, as a woman, yeah. you need to do that. Yes. So that there's constantly new excitement being bred and brought into the energy. And then that is going to also be brought into your sexual life. It's so, so important. It's huge. Like what are your extracurriculars that get you yes. jacked? Have a, have you a hobby, have a passion, something that's going to bring some zest within you. That is going to transfer into your relationship and into the bedroom. It so is. Yeah. Okay, next one here. Uh, I struggle with telling my husband that I don't like a certain move that he thinks is the best and probably <laughs> learned off of porn. How do I tell him this without hurting his ego? Aww, yeah. I say show him. Like, in the bedroom, just be like, you know, it's always about positive reinforcement. So mm. show him what you do like and, like, really make the, ooh, like, really make the moans and the enjoyment so that you can, like, retrain him without being like, hey, babe, this sucks show him it's like you know when you're training a dog like when they do the good behavior you're like good good doggy give them the treat give them the treat try to really praise men love praise try to we all love praise we all love praise try to highlight the moments where you're like oh yeah that's really what i like give me more of that yeah yeah how do i tell my partner that i need more sex when he's dead tired with zero libido wait is he cheating on me can Mm. men have zero libido Another person sent in the same kind of thing. Low libido, being so stressed from life that I don't even think about it anymore and feeling shame when my partner brings it up. Yeah. I mean, that's so real. That's so real. And I think that happens in a lot of relationship dynamics. Yes. That one person is going to have a higher sex drive. And then the other person might just be really going through a fucking shitty time. There can be so many things like medications, you know, medical illnesses, stress. And I think also just normalizing that this is also a part of like our human physiology when we are Mm -hmm. going through stressful times when our stress hormones are high. The last thing our body wants to do is reproduce like biologically our bodies are set up that way that if you know back in the day the tiger was chasing us well you're not gonna you know and you're stressed you're not gonna want to go and have sex you're running yeah all of your body's resources and energy are going to moving you away from the danger and a lot of us in this day and age even though tigers aren't chasing us are are dealing with stress on a regular basis Mm -hmm. and so our bodies are receiving the message that it's not sex time it's danger run away from the tiger. Yeah. So a lot of us, I, f- I see this across the board. A lot of us are struggling with libido because I think that our demands in society are higher than ever. Things are more expensive. People are having to work more. You've got families. And so it's just, it's a, it's really, it's our hormones. Yeah. When your cortisol and your hormones are high, that is also going to impact all of your other hormones, including your sex hormones. We're seeing men's testosterone rates, uh, rates dropping. Yes. And yes. women, as women, our hormones, I think, are, are really going through it as well. And so going to your doctor, I'm always an advocate for naturopaths because they look at things from more of a holistic lens yes, and how, how we can balance that. But yeah. sometimes just like some hormonal stuff might need some support yeah and even just like basic nervous system regulation yeah like how do you regulate your nervous system what is going to help you feel more calm centered and grounded in your physical body yeah and that's going to help balance your hormones the mismatched libido was a big thing that came in with you guys a lot of you were saying that I've experienced that as well and like for me sometimes yeah if a partner is going through it or maybe that's just the regular for you guys yeah. I mean sometimes too it's like if your needs are higher than your partner's like maybe you do need to go and get a toy and that's yeah. where once again having that relationship with yourself um you know having some solo masturbation sessions yeah some solo sessions some solo sh- solo sessions <laughs> <laughs>
Um, okay, my husband doesn't, we kind of talked about this a bit. My husband doesn't get that foreplay is important, that it doesn't mean touching my privates. Foreplay is not just that. It's the little things throughout the day, like showing affection, like a hug, getting me a coffee. How do I get the point across to someone who loves me but doesn't get it? I remember reading the book, Come As You Are. Mm. Great book. And I feel like in that book, it talks, it's very educational about women's, how we're, our sexuality in large part is different. Like, on average, 75% of men have spontaneous sexual desire. Okay. So they can just like snap of a finger, let's go. <laughs> let's go, yeah. Whereas, you know, for women, it's only like 15% of us are like that. The majority of us, it's more responsive. So we need we need some sort of stimulus. And for us, we, we are, I think, emotional beings. We want that feeling like your partner cares. What are the things going on in your head that maybe need to be addressed if you've got any concerns with your partner? It's pretty hard to want to be physically intimate with someone if you're not feeling like everything is good and synced up mentally and emotionally. Yeah. And I mean, this also made me think of the love languages because what I heard from that was acts of service, Mm. that that's what she wanted from her partner. And if you can get to know what your love language is and what your partner's love language is, and you can both be familiar with that, then you can start showing up for one another in the way that you want to feel loved. Yeah. And I think it's such a big thing for us as women is just to advocate and verbalize our wants and our needs. Yeah. I think a lot of us really have a hard time communicating our wants and our needs. And we like maybe drop hints or we just assume Is it that too much. Am I asking yeah. too much? Or they, yeah. we assume that they are, they should just know, but men and women are so different. It's almost like we need to educate one another on what we need. You know what? The one good thing that I got from the Bible was this one quote. When you ask, you shall receive. receive. And honey, yes. I love to ask for what I want. Oh and I am going to fucking get it from yes, every corner are. of life. Next question. I'm working on being celibate and the struggles of that. Whew, not yeah. easy. I do not want to go from man to man, but I miss sex. But at the same time, sometimes when I have meaningless sex, I feel more empty inside. Like in a way, it makes me feel more lonely. Mm-hmm. This one, I feel like I wish this person was here right now because I yeah. feel like there are so many different layers within this. Like you say you're working on being celibate. I question like, yeah, so you say you miss sex, but you don't want to go from man to man. Mm. Is it because is there a part of you that's like judging that Mm. you being with multiple partners and you saying that you feel more empty and lonely after? Is there a self-judgment as a a women? I think a lot of us, you know, back in the day, us being called sluts if we had partners, whereas for men, it was like, oh, you're a stud. I think that stigma still sticks to a lot of us. So my Mm -hmm. first question to you, is there a part of you that's judging yourself for going out and meeting your needs and having these partners? And my second thought or question would be, what is it about it that's making it feel lonely for you? Mm -hmm. Is there a need that you're not getting met with these partners? Like, is there something you could communicate to them? Like, hey, it would be really great if after we could like cuddle for a bit or, you know, like what do you need to not make these interactions feel lonely? after? Right. I'm also really curious as to why you want to be celibate if you're Mm -hmm. missing sex. But then there's the piece that, okay, well, these relationships are feeling like a little superficial. That was what I got out of it. Mm -hmm. What is it that you really, really want Well, I think a lot of us, there were a few messages that came in, women struggling with dating. I think a lot Mm -hmm. of us, and I will say myself included, would love to find a partner that they're like stoked on, that is the right partnership, and that you want, then you want to have sex. I think for a lot of us these days, we struggle with finding a man that we actually want to have sex with. Yes. Because we're not finding those men that we're stoked on. So then as women, we still have wants and needs. So you're like, okay, I guess I'll go out and have some casual sex, but then it's like not really that good and fulfilling. My thought is like, do you have someone in your life who you feel more comfortable or safe with yes. that you do have that attraction with yeah. and maybe it could be like a friends with benefits situation I like it where you can communicate like hey I'm not looking for anything serious but I would love to I miss sex yeah. and then it's like maybe a more comfortable environment safer environment for you to communicate like hey after I'd love can you like text me after and just be like how are you doing yeah. like you know you don't want to feel like, like you have a friendship yeah, yeah. And caveat, 
be 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 mindful of the oxytocin. You might fall in love with them. <laughs> right. I mean, this is the this is <laughs> this is maybe why this person wants to be celibate yeah. because yeah. that's what's on the other side when you do connect. Is that maybe that's what's leading to the loneliness? Is that when the person does leave and they're not connected? Is that yeah. then there's this like sadness and yearning and there's a grief over that loss of connection. And that's a real thing. Once again, on a physiological, biological level of that. But that bonding hormone, yeah. your body is going to crave that person. And that is not your fault. It's not at all. And that's natural. It's and totally that is natural. your human body doing what it does to best serve you yes. in the best way that it knows how. And it's annoying as hell. <laughs> so as a single woman. Yes. Um, and also just like that mismatch, like the fact that men don't have that as much as we do just uh, always fucking pisses me off. Like that's bullshit. I feel yeah. like we've been set up to fail in this equation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't like that one little bit. Um, yeah, we're set up to fail at like having a ton sex. of casual sex. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Like our bodies aren't specifically <sighs> necessarily designed for it that that's way. That's so annoying. And I mean, I'm totally open hearing from women that have conquered that and yes. mastered that art because I'm sure that there are some out there. I feel like the only women I know who have conquered that, if I'm being honest from what I've witnessed, are women, and I could be wrong, this is just from what I've personally encountered, are women who are not having as deeply emotionally connected sex. Right. It's just like, wham, bam, like put them against the wall, and like porn sex. But then to me, that sex isn't as good. Yeah. That's not the kind of sex I want to have. I want to have like that deep tantra sex that we were yeah, talking about. Yeah, I want yeah. the cervical orgasms that are going to make me fall in love. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay this, is, okay, this is our last question. This is coming from a 46-year-old male. He says, people seem to want to have sex so much quicker these days. I always, in the past, have enjoyed dates, getting to know someone before sex, but now everyone's just, like, getting right to it. Another girl message saying, men now don't want to even take you out on dates. They just want to take you home and bang you. Right. So it seems like there has been this shift where we're having more casual sex a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this message these messages also point, we've got both a male and a female here who are both struggling with yeah. that. So it just goes to show that there are still people out there who want to spend time, you know, getting to yeah. know each other on a deeper level. And you will find each other. Yeah. Like you will. Stick to your values. A million percent. Stick to what you want and yeah. honor you. Yes. Like if you want to go out and Fuck, yeah. Then you go out and fuck. Do it. You want to <laughs> wine and dine a woman yeah. and you want to take the slow route. Yes. You do that. Yes. You don't want to go out and hook up. Then yeah. you make it perfectly clear that you're a queen. Yeah. And then you need to be treated like X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And if not, see you later. The more you can get to know yourself and your values and really stand strong in those, mm -hmm. you're going to weed out all the, the things, the people that you don't want and just safe space for what is aligned exactly and those people yeah okay well this was so fun charlotte we have to it wrap was. up but thank you so much for joining us it was my pleasure yeah, yeah. thank literally you literally pleasure yeah. pleasure what's your pleasure yeah i hope you guys are having more pleasure hope this was uh, helpful bye bye loves